Hello YouTubers, love at Scout One. Um, I'm changing my uh, just my outlook a little bit here, and I've rigged some different lighting up. So I'm hoping this is going to be um, a bit different. Like I said, I had a few comments about my production value, so um, professional men, professional tools, and all that sort of stuff. We'll try and make it um, a bit lighter. Let me just have a. I'm still not happy with these lights, but try and get it right. Okay, um, as a part two to my. 12 ball versus 12 gauge video that I did. Um, I thought just to try and explain a little more about a little bit more about bores and cartridge ratings and one thing or another, um, I'd show you a selection of cartridges. Selection of cartridges, and we'll start down here with the real small stuff. That's um, nine millimeter garden gun or rook rifle, 410, 28 bore, 20 bore. 16 bar 12 okay all shotgun cartridges are virtually all the same and I, I'll show you this cartridge which is clear clear plastic and I hope that kind of just illustrates my point all cartridges are set off with a priming pin that's a an explosive pin an explosive cap if you like which ignites powder which is powder there which at great force forces this wad forward which fires or discharges the shot load and then un unpeels the end of the cartridge that's got a card end but most are crimped you can see that most are crimped like that probably the yellow one's a bit better to uh, to uh, illustrate that and then all that happens is the forces in there force the wadding forward, forces the shot or payload forward which uncrimps that and then the shot goes skyward. Um, there are different kinds of wadding, uh, generally it's either fibre wad which is which is what they are or like a plastic cup, basically all that is with a plastic cup with fins on that that um, spread when you, uh, you know, when it's discharged, it keeps the shot together a bit longer. Um, most shoots, most clay shoots, anyway, most clay shoots that I go to, if they're like hay bale shoots or clay clay shoots in farmers' fields where they're going to have cattle, they will say fibre wad only, which means that the fibre wads after a certain time will degrade or biodegrade, um, and you know that's fair enough. There are the, the plastic wads do degrade. That the the material that they're made out of does degrade, but it does take a long time. And um, cattle that have eaten them or eaten them in with the herbage or the silage or whatever they're eating, that you know they can choke and they can die. So you, you know it's one of those things that you got to bear in mind. Um, taking 12 bar as a standard, um, they generally two and a half inches long case length, um, but they do two and three quarters which is that which is the uh, black gold game ball which is a very good cartridge and then they go up to three inch which is you know heavier stuff um, those shots that you can see there are SG's if you've been an angler or been a fisherman you know what SG shots are well basically all that is is one of those shots with a with a slot cut in it so you can nip it on your line that's that's all the shots are there are different size shots from zero or BB or pepper or uh, micro dust shot right up to SGs, SSGs, triple A's. Um, I generally shoot fives. I used to like hull hull cartridge three crown fives. You can't get them everywhere now. I wish I could get a steady source of them because they're a very good cartridge. But I have been shooting these black gold, which have got um, I think called the Gordon system in, which is a uh, um, basically the 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 physics of it is is it reduces recoil. That's all it does. Um, 12 bore is probably one of the most commonly used cartridges in the world wherever you go if you were dropped in middle of probably middle of anywhere you'd probably be able to lay your hands on either 12 gauge or 20 gauge cartridges um, not just sporting applications a lot of military applications you can buy cartridges with just a single bulletin or a single slug um, and they can be shot quite accurately out of you know shotguns that are, are made for them or designed for them. Um, there are Sabo bullets, which is basically just a lump of lead with a ballistic tip, and it's got like a, a, a cowl that goes around it. So when it fires, it starts the the, the lead slug spinning in the air, 
uh, and you can shoot quite accurately with them. They're used for shooting boar and jackals and hyena and um, you know vermin control in in sort of areas where that's allowable. Um, we can have them on license in the UK for shooting wild boar, but wild boar has got to be a term and condition on your on your firearm certificate. You can't just rack up and you know ask for them. I shoot 410 rifle slug, which I dis discussed with you before, which are them which we'll come on to, but I use them for you know for fox control. Um, you can get cartridges with flares in. You know if you're on a boat or you know some people carry a shotgun on their boat. You know you can use it to project a flare up. Um, you know, there 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 are there are endless uses for you know for shotguns in all kinds of arenas. You know, some some fire brigades use them for blasting locks off doors, uh, firing lines up to you know buildings so people can scale buildings or climb buildings or whatever. You know, it's not it's not just shooting game or shooting you know targets. You know, there are there are other uses for you know especially for the twelve bar. Um, Probably the most popular cartridge sold in the UK. That being said, at one time, the next gauge down, 16 gauge or 16 bar, um, is a very good cartridge. A lot lighter on the shoulder than the um, than the 12. Um, back in day, a a gentleman or a country gentleman would have a either a pair or a trio of. Um, 16 bar hammer guns and he would go out and he would shoot pheasant or shoot grouse with his load roll day and you know his load would load for him and that's the cartridge that he'd shoot 12 bar is is you know probably the most common but at one time 16 bar sold just as many um, because it was it was frowned on to have a 12 bar it was found to be uncouth and it was used for life pigeon shooting and um, you know if you've seen my Boswell video about the life pigeon gun then you know you'll understand about that but um 16 bar is very good a lot of ladies that shoot for uh, that shoot 410 or 410 or 28 bar um sometimes miss the leap from 20 bar and go straight to 16 bar um 16 bar is not something i've i've shot very much um i've borrowed this cartridge off a pal and he's you know get it be getting it back later on um it's nice it's soft on the shoulder um you know it's oops it's it's you know it's a good thing it's a nice thing um and there are some very good guns made with the 16 bar um goldens of Huddersfield make a really well used to make a really a nice gun purdy made some some really good guns as you'd expect um and it is a bit of a, a bit of an oddball cal caliber now but still has a very very good following uh the 20 bar 20 bar cartridges are generally yellow um, so that you know, there's not much difference between the yellow, yellow 20 and the blue 16. But some comedian did make um, 20 bar, uh, 16 bar cartridges because generally they're blue. But some comedian made them in yellow, and then he made 12 bar in yellow. So if you've got three boxes all split in your bag, which can be can be very dangerous, you know that would go in a that would go in a 12 bar, and you wouldn't notice it. Put a cartridge behind it, you've got a split barrel, or you could lose your hand. 20 bar happens all the time, somebody will feed one in, look, think, oh, I haven't fed, fed a cartridge in, and then they feel, feed a 12 bar behind it, and then you've got lost hands, lost faces, uh, imminent death, it's, you know, it's not good. 20 bar is a good all-rounder. Lads that shoot, and shoot well, like I said before, um, shoot 12 bar. Lads that shoot, and shoot exceptionally well, shoot 20 bar. Um, it's very, very sporting, it's light to carry. Um, there are some excellent 30 and 32 inch barreled um, game guns out there for that load. Um, I, I like 20 bar, I shoot 20 bar a lot. Um, Little Scout's learning 20 bar, um, he's just finished with 28 bar. Um, he's, he's going through ranks and learning shooting with a 20 bar. Um, it's a bit bit hard on shoulder for him yet, I mean he's quite a big kid as you've seen but um, it's still a bit, it's still, you know, it still rattles his eardrums a little bit. Um, a lot of ladies start with 20 bar and finish with 20 bar um it's light for light on the shoulder light to carry um the the ammunition is a bit dearer than 16 and a bit dearer than 20 but with lead prices at the moment it's quite comparable um but um even for a junior or for somebody learning 
20 bar is good because you you know you don't walk away from a, a lesson with you know with your shoulder bruised or you know if some of the person that's instructing is not instructing you very well then you know it, it, it does put a lot of people off shooting i do know that but um 20 bar is really really good it's good for game good for good for anything anything that uh, 12 bar can do or 20 bar can do in the right hands uh the next one down is 28 bar which is a uh, another nice cartridge it's very light on the shoulder again lads that shoot and get good with 20 bar then go to 28 um i know some of the royals are very very um fond of the 28 bar uh, and shoot 28 bar really well um 28 bar something i like uh, little scout shoots 28 bar quite a bit um mrs scout shoots 28 bar quite a bit um it's just a, a lighter light cartridge. It's, I mean, that's 25 grams of five. You know, that'd bring a that'd bring a pigeon down. And if you've got a, you know, a pigeon job to do where you, sh you 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 know you're probably looking at a bag of maybe, you know, 130 140 pigeons in a day, or you know, 300 pigeons over three days, then it's not hard on the shoulder. The only thing with 28 bore is the ammunition is very expensive. You're looking at seven and a half quid for 25, whereas you know 12 you could probably you know, 12 bar cartridges, you could probably get for four quid, four and a half quid, depending on what you're buying. 16 bar are comparable with 20 bar, they're sort of five, five and a half quid a box. Um, 28 bar is good, it's a good junior's good, it's a good uh, edge row gun for walking around edge rows. You know, I don't, I don't mind at all, I quite like mine, so, and I've had, it, I've had mine quite a bit, we got mine before, people were fashionable. After I'd had the accident with my shoulder then, my doc said, oh, you're not going to be able to shoot very much, Paul, so um, it would either get a gun and persevere with it or not shoot at all, which, you know, to a shooting and stalking man's a bit, uh, comes a bit of a blow, but, you know, we uh, we soldier on and take the tablets and uh, try and overcome a little bit. Uh, next one down is a, a, well, 410 isn't a bar size. If you remember, we talked about bars being... Um, designed to hold the same number of spherical spheres spherical spheres can you have spherical spheres the band of spherical aren't they same number of um, lead balls of equal weight and size that make an imperial pound 410 doesn't do that 410 is a rifle caliber 410 came to being um when uh, a lot of the um a lot of the gentlemen were coming back from um the Boer War, the Crimea were coming back with their old service rifles and what a lot of them did, because this was a, a cartridge that was used in um shooting canes and um you know little folding guns, little folding poachers guns generally, um they had a lot of them had their service rifles reamed out to four ten, which is a rifle calibre. Um, and then they could still keep the service rifle with a bit of modification to the uh, 303 magazine. They could have a bolt action shotgun which they could go out on the hedgerows or you know go to the shoot or go roosting or whatever. 410 is probably where most people start their shooting careers. I did, Little Scout did, talked to countless shooters. They'll generally have started with an old 410, a folding 410. The folding 410 with the skeleton stock, which means the, the, there's a big cutout of the stock which makes it light and folds exactly in half. Generally made by Belgian or American manufacturers, they were generally considered poachers guns. And they were considered poachers guns basically because they folded in half and they could be slipped in a game pocket or a pocket that had been sewn in a big overcoat. So Poacher Pete could go out. Um, you know, blag a couple of pheasants or three or four pheasants for the pot, maybe shoot a couple of rabbits and a hare and, you know, swap that for ale at the at the pub on the way home and you know that that is the that is the romantic view of a poacher. I'm not gonna get into my soapbox about poaching, but the rom romantic view of the poacher is that's what's happened. Um, you know, the handful of little two inch cartridges like that, that's um you know, I don't know what I don't know what gram gram load is behind that. But that's a, it's got a six shot in. There's not a lot in it, but can, in right hands can do a lot of damage. Uh, they're three inch magnum ones. Anyway, they're three inch magnum ones, so you can sort of see the difference. Um, very little recoil, very light ammunition. You can get a box of ammunition for 
<clears throat> I don't know, four quid are they? For 25 cartridges. I shoot 410 a lot. You've seen my one of my 410s, my 410 uh, with choke mods. But I shoot rifle slug uh, for Fox Control, which basically, I don't know if you can see it, where it's different coloured there, where it's light. Well, that bit there, which is sort of the size of your finger end. Um, basically, that's a little rifled slug. All that is is a lump of lead with a with a a, con a conical top, and it's got fins um, moulded into it. So when it, it exits the barrel, it spins in the air. So it, it does stabilise a little bit. Twenty twenty five yards. They are they are awesome. Awesome for fox control. Awesome. Um, never shot targets much with it with it really, but. Uh, uh, really good. I really like my 410. It's good if you're learning. There are some very, very good shots who shoot game with 410. There's some excellent shots who shoot clays with 410. In fact, one of the, I think the, the either the British champion or the world champion 410 shooter. Um, I stamp to be corrected. I think it's British. He lives in Wakefield. Um, he does, you know, he does a bit of beating for us and does shoot with us occasionally. But nice fella. Um, but yeah, really knows his stuff with his 410. The last one I want to show you is that, and I don't know if many of you might not have seen that. That's a 9mm garden gun or a rook rifle cartridge. Basically all that is is a neck down 410 cartridge. Um, neck down from 0.41 over, uh, over an inch to 9mm, which is a, um, a metric size. Um, I don't know what that is in old money. But all that is is a brass rim fire cartridge. Um, fires on the rim. With dust shot in it, I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, and that's a, a cartridge for a garden gun or a rook rifle. Garden gun or rook rifles were basically what they are um, for shooting rooks and jackdaws in the garden. Um, I don't have a rook rifle. I've borrowed that cartridge off a pal, um, and he's he's waiting to get it back. But um, uh, they they're very difficult to get hold of rook rifles, and you know, and or garden guns, depending on what you want to buy. Um, ideal for um, you know the the rook rifle or, or garden gun would have been given to the keeper's son, and he would have been told to walk round the market garden when it was a big house, and shoot the the rats, shoot corvid, shoot magpies, jays, rooks, crows, uh, wood pigeons, feral pigeons, rabbits if you could get to them. Um, basically, it's a low-powered shotgun to use in the garden. That's all it is. Um, uh, I, I don't really have a great deal of experience of them. I'm just putting it in there just to illustrate, you know, another size. Um, I would like to get one because I've got quite a quite a big garden uh, at the back of the house, but um, I'm surrounded by neighbours, so probably, you know, I don't really want to start losing uh, a miniature shotgun off in the garden. But you know, I'm trying to try and keep keep bandit nick with everybody, as they say. Um, there are. Um, Oops, there are other sizes going that way bigger you you can get into from 12 this 10 up to 8 6 up to 4 and 2 bar and then you're into punt gun territory and basically all a punt gun is is a steel barrel with a breech on you load a pound and a half of bb shot in you know a good pound of pew black powder or whatever you know ram it down and then you go out on the wash you know throw your decoys out Wait well, there's a, a flock of teal or geese or whatever, and then just loose it off. Um, from what I've seen and what I've seen a punk gun in, it, those that are good at it are very good at it, and those that don't know about it should just stay away from it because it's it's a it's a it's an art and it's not something I know a great deal about. Ten bars, a lot of them generally coming from Spain, um, and eight bars, um, four, two, six. I think the only ones I've ever seen have been black powder ones, which is same again. You have to, you know, put your wad in, in, put your charge in, put a blast cap on it. It, it gets into territory that I don't know anything about, so I don't really want to sort of start uh, confusing y'all and uh, and talking about stuff that I don't really know about because I, you know, it, it gets a bit difficult. But as you can see, there's a massive array of cartridges there, big array of sizes, um, as there are with bullets. If you've seen the video that I did on bullets. Um, it, you know, ballistics and shotgun collect, cartridge collecting. There are a lot out there. You know, there are there are some guys who, who do you know do collect cartridges. Um, I've got a couple of cartridge um, displays that have been made up that I've got on the wall in the man cave. So I'll show you them. We'll give, we'll have a walk around the man cave and see what you think. Um, 
but yeah i hope that's been some interest to you um like comment subscribe if you like it um you know any feedback you want to give me that's great i'll uh, I'll, I'll work on this lighting and camera holding and one thing or another and um we'll, we'll, we'll try something a bit different next time okay guys thanks very much for your indulgence and your interest today you all have a good day and be safe cheers